Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I want to show you easy ways to create really interesting vignettes that go way beyond what the standard vignette effect in Affinity Photo can do. So there's a lot of secret sauce in this video. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, this video will be followed up for my Patreon supporters with an extended version where I give you some additional insights, tips and tricks about vignettes and how to use them. All right, so let's get started here. And as you know, in the live filters in Affinity Photo, you find down here on the lower part of your layers tab, there is a vignette effect in here, but it's kind of basic. There is not too much settings in there. So you have exposure, which adjusts the brightness that is happening in the vignette area around the center. So you can make it darker or brighter. Then you have the hardness and that basically adjusts how much it is fading between the center and the outside. It can have a very sharp circle or very smooth. Then you have the scale, which is setting up how big the vignette is. And you have a shape which turns the vignette from a circle into a very flat ellipse. So this is what you can do. But that's also all you can do with that. There's not much more. Also, what you can see here is that the effect itself kind of makes the picture darker in a way that's not too beautiful. So we can find some other solutions that work better. Let's first set this vignette up in a way that we enjoy. Let's make it not too dark like this. Let's see from the scale. Let's go like that. And from the shape, that looks good. And here's the first very easy trick to improve a vignette, and that is to change the blend mode. So you can play around with that to see what they do for you. There's a lot of interesting effects and results you can get from that. I found that multiply is a very interesting way to do that. And you can see when you look now at the darker areas of the image, they are a lot more interesting than what we have seen just a second ago with our normal blend mode. Look at that. That's a normal blend mode. This is the multiply blend mode already. We have a bit of a problem here because as you can see here, the vignette is also now adjusting the center of the image, even though there's no adjustment, there's no change there. So it's a little bit strange, but it's happening and we can counteract this by simply creating a curve adjustment and combining it with another ellipse. So let's go over here on the left side to our ellipse tool. This is part of all these shape tools here. So click on that, hold it, and there you can select ellipse tool, go to the center of the image and then hold the control key and then click and drag. And this will create an ellipse around that starting point. So that's pretty important for us. Let's make this a little bit smaller, go like that shape looks good. And because this is a vector shape, we can change it later on. No problem there. What we can also do here is we can go to effects tab over here and adjust the Gaussian blur. And as you can see here, this will now create a nice faded ellipse for us. And we can use this as a mask actually. So next, what we are going to do is we are going to create an adjustment for curves and then after we've created that, click here on ellipse, drag it upwards on top of your curve, and then again, click on the ellipse, right click and say mask to below. And so now the ellipse is functioning as a mask for us. Now we can double click on our curves adjustment to open it up. And as you can see here, if I move this around, I can make that area brighter or darker. And of course, because it's a curve, you can also, for example, give it some more contrast. You can play around with all of these values here, even the color channels, whatever you want to do. So as you can see, I can bring back some brightness to the center of my image. And just like that, we have created a much more interesting image, very nice center focus. And the whole moment feels a lot more intimate and private and just an interesting story where we follow this person through these bushes here compared to the original situation. As you can see here, very flat, evenly lit, not so interesting because after all, you want to tell a story with that image. Now, 
I want to show you, of course, some more interesting ways. So this is not all. This is very interesting secret sauce. These are the starting steps. Here we have another picture and we are going to do some advanced adjustments here. Because when you think about a vignette, you also want to think about how does the human eye, the human brain process an image. So here are some interesting steps that we have. Usually when you look at something, it is sharp and colorful in the center. And then the more it goes to the edges of your vision, it becomes less sharp, less contrasted, less colorful. Of course, our brain is filling in that a little bit, so it still looks colorful, but the main attention is in the center. So let's try to replicate that a little bit here. And you can see how much of an impact that has on how we perceive the image. So first of all, we are again going to create the vignette here with that effect. So let's make this a little bit darker, reduce the hardness like this. That looks good. Let's see with the scale. That's also nice. Okay, so that's already pretty good. We have now a vignette. You can already see that this is changing the image, but it's not sufficient. We want to do some more things. So again, we are going to create that nice ellipse over here from the center of the image, but we are this time working with two different ellipses. So let's create one of those. Color doesn't matter, by the way, because this is just used as a mask. So it can be any color you want. And first of all, Let's set this up with a blur again, like this looks good for the start. And what we are going to do now is that we will put this in a group with some effects that we want to use. So again, let's think about what we just said. So we want to apply this to the contrast, for example, we want to apply this to the saturation, we want to apply this to the warmth of the image. So we can do that. Let's do that real quick here. So. I will create some adjustments here. So we are going to create a curve adjustment. We are going to create a white balance adjustment. We are going to create a brightness and contrast adjustment. And we are also going to create a vibrance adjustment just like that. So now I'm pushing the ellipse on top of everything. I'm selecting everything like so. So the way you're doing that is to click on the upper layer, hold shift, click on the lower layer that you want to select like this. And then on your keyboard, control G, or you can right click and say group. That's also possible. And now we have created our first group. Of course, we can still see the ellipse. So the way we get rid of the ellipse is that we set the blend mode to erase. And then we are renaming the group to outside because this is going to affect only the outside of what is around the ellipse. This is why we erase everything inside of there. And this is also why the ellipse is on top of everything. So now when we play around with our adjustments, you can see I can reduce the saturation. Right now I have completely reduced it to black and white just so you see it, but you can see it is only happening on the outside because everything else is erased from that adjustment in the middle where our ellipse is, right? So that's very helpful for us. Now, before we do that, I also want to create the inside adjustment. So for that, what we are going to do is we select our group. And again, you can go on your keyboard, control J to duplicate it, or right click on that group and say duplicate like this. Now here we have to use another method. So we are going to use that ellipse, drag it outside of the group, set the blend mode back to normal, right click on that ellipse and say mask to below. So this is working now as a mask. So everything inside is kept, everything outside is not kept. Again, we can test this. Let's go into our vibrance adjustment, set the saturation to minus 100%. And you can see that now the inside is black and white. In this case, I want to have the inside a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do this again, hold control. So it's adjusted around the center point here. And then we are adjusting it like this. So it stays nicer with the vignette that we have created at the start. By the way, here's two other steps you want to look into. One is you want to rename this to inside so you are not confused about what is going on. And then also you want to have your vignette adjustment 
on top of everything, but not inside of any of those groups. All right, so now that we've done this, Let's reset our vibrance here and let's start playing around with the value. So let's go first for the outside. Let's go here for vibrance. I want to reduce the saturation a little bit. So we have basically more saturation in the center. Then I want to also have a little bit less contrast here. Then I also want to have this a little bit cooler on the outside. Let's go like this. And then also for the curves adjustment, do we actually need to do anything here? Let's push this a little bit down, just a hint. Actually, we don't really need the curves adjustment, but you can still keep it in there because it's nice to adjust the brightness, but also to be able to adjust a different color channel. So it does have its purpose. Let's go here now to the inside. And here I want to bring some more saturation and also I want to bring some more contrast in here. You can, by the way, also play around with other adjustments, like for example, the live filter for clarity on the inside might be interesting. We can actually add this right now. Let's go here to live filters and then to clarity, which we have up here, and then give some more clarity in the center of the image. Let's see, there we go. So you can see we have some more clarity here. Then what else do we need to do? We could, oh, we already have adjusted some more contrast, so that's nice. Oh, and also the center of the image a little bit warmer. Now, why are we doing all these adjustments? The reasoning behind that is because our eye and also our mind is attracted by things that have more color, that are warmer, that have more sharpness, more detail and more contrast, while the opposite is less interesting to our eye. Of course, you don't want to overdo it. You still have to look at the image. For example, we can see here right now that the warmer area here is just suddenly ending here at the edge of our image. So we can, for example, reduce the warmth or because the ellipse is still just a vector shape, we can also change still the blurriness, the Gaussian blur of our ellipse. So right now it's 100 pixels. It's not very much. So let's go here with, for example, 250. And you can see that now we have a softer gradient between the inside and the outside. And so we don't have such a sudden change between the warmer and the cooler areas of the picture. So now when we compare our result to the original image, you can see there's a lot of change in there where we have a lot more focus on the center and there is a bigger and better connection between the guy and the mountains in the background. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.